Welcome into the In the Money podcast for Derby Day, Saturday, May 5th. Keeneland's Director of Wagering Development, Jim Goodman, here along with me, Tom Leach, as we take a look at the big stakes on the Derby Day card. We're just going to take them in order, culminating with the Derby, which is the end of an all-stakes pick four, the end of uh, the all-stakes pick five, and the end of an all-stakes pick six. So just uh, always an incredible card. So let's jump into the sixth, Jim. It's the grade one Humana Distaff for the Phillies and Mayors going seven furlongs. Who do you like? Well, I like a lot of horses in here. This is a nice race to start off. The, uh, there's no big, there's no pick six starting here. Uh, it it actually starts in the seventh race, but this is a seven furlong race, a Grade One, and and there's a lot of nice horses in here. I know Salty's one of your favorites. Uh, don't know if she's going to run on Friday or Saturday, so that's that's the problem we've got in doing these, uh, recording these a day out. So I, I, I'm assuming she's going to go in the in the in the dis, in the distaff race on Friday. So I left her off here. Uh, I'm going to take American Gal for Ortiz and Simon Callahan on the outside. I really like that Madison. Uh, just just got nipped at the wire by Finley's Lucky Charm, and that's the two horses I like in here. Um, Battaglia made them both seven to two off that race, and I can I can understand that. I, there wasn't much to separate them there, uh, even though American Gal dropped back to fourth. There was a four horse um, um, photo finish, and and um, Lewis Bay was also in that, and he's actually got her as the as the favorite here at three to one for Chad Brown. I, hard to figure out which one of those should be the favorite. I'm going to take American Gal. I think she may track the speed from outside. I like that eight draw with Finley's Lucky Charm and and uh, Lewis Bay inside her. And I think she can track the speed and run them down in, in the stretch. And, uh, but this it's a nice race. Those three horses I can make cases for all of them. I can also make a case for Sky Diamond shipping from Santa Anita for Mike Smith and Bill Spar. So. Um, my pick here is probably American Gal, but I could be talked into Finley's Lucky Charm or uh, Lewis Bay um, as well. But uh, going to go with the outside and Jose Ortiz. If Salty runs, she'll be my key. Uh, I think, uh, as I said, the, when she ran in the Madison, that she's best going to be best around uh, one turn, and uh, that's what she'll get again here. And she was flying um, late on that opening day stake at Keeneland. Um, if she doesn't go, then I, I like uh, a lot of the same ones. I like Lewis Bade probably be at the top of my list, but by the slimmest of margins with American Gal and Finley's Lucky Charm, who, by the way, is six for six at Churchill. Ivy Bell I'd probably throw in there too, but uh, Salty will be my key if she runs. Uh, seventh race is uh, Phillies and Mares on the turf at a mile in the Churchill <clears throat> Distaff Mile. It's a grade two. I like Chad Brown's Dream a While in here on the cutback. Working great, and uh, Chad Brown's been on fire uh, here in Kentucky in this spring. Um, but I think there are some price horses that are intriguing in here. I think Luck Coronel from the outside is vulnerable from that outside post going a mile. And I don't know that she's quite as good as she used to be. She might have lost a half a step. Uh, on leave for Suge, four wins at the one-mile distance, I think is noteworthy. So that one at a price I like. Proctor's Ledge, um, I'm not Sure what happened in the race at Keeneland, but uh, I think she is certainly better than that, so I would uh, give her a look. Thundering Sky, the two with that, uh, some speed and that good draw down near the inside, I think is dangerous. So Dream of Wiles, the, the win pick, but uh, the 9, 6, and 2, uh, I like those as well as far as uh, playing around in exactas and tries. How about you? Yeah, I think this is a spread race, and I'm going to tell you why, because the horse that I like you didn't mention, uh, Rest Ips of the 7 at 10 to 1 for Lake Brew and Ian Wilkes. Almost won the Honey Fox at Gulfstream, was uh, was flying late. Uh, likes the distance, two for nine at the distance, two for four at Churchill. Um, ran ran here well last year and has really come into this race. I thought that race sets her up perfectly. A 94 buyer, uh, best lifetime buyer, uh, obviously had this race in in her sights as uh, as Wilkes would, was probably using the Gulfstream race as a prep and almost won it at 14-1. to 1. So I like Riss Ipsa here at a price. Also like Proctor's Ledge at twelve to one for Brandon Walsh. I thought that Jenny Wiley's a throw out. I don't think she hung outside of the ten hole and never really never really got in the in the race at all. Uh but she ran right with La Cornell and Dream Dancing and Madame Dance a lot, so I think she's competitive as well. And then um Madame Dance a lot, it's got a shot. I mean Dream of Wiley's got a shot. Probably probably is the most logical horse since Chad Brown is so hot. But I'm gonna take a swing here at rest ips of the seven horse. Takes us to the eighth race, the Churchill Downs. Uh, it's a grade two for four-year-olds and up. Uh, they'll go around one turn, and uh, this is always a great race. Uh, where did you land in the Churchill Downs? Yeah, when I first looked at this, I looked at uh, Whitmore, the one horse, and I thought, well, he should be the favorite. 
He's a sprint specialist. He's he's uh, ten for eighteen lifetime and uh, has hasn't run seven furlongs, uh, but he, he's great at six furlongs. They had him on the Derby Trail and he he, he started uh, last year and and started running six furlong races and just was unstoppable. But then I looked at Imperial Hint. He's pretty tough. <laughs> awesome Slew's pretty tough. I, hard to pick between those three. Um, and then I went to Limousine Liberal because I Limousine Liberal something about Churchill Downs and Keeneland brings out the best in him. And he almost won the Commonwealth uh, Warriors Club beat him that day. I, that was kind of a freakish effort from Warriors Club. Uh, I think Limousine Liberal needed the race, and I think he'll he comes back on top here and uh, actually. Um, defends his crown in, in the Churchill Downs. He won there one here last year beating Awesome Slew. So I'm gonna take Limousine Liberal, I'm gonna use Whitmore below him, I'm gonna use Imperial Hint below him, and I'm gonna use Warriors Club and Awesome Slew. But um, I think Limousine Liberal is the pick here and if you get four to one that's kind of a bargain. I'm going to the outside to Awesome Slew, who I think should have won the race last year. Um lots of grade one experience, likes Churchill Downs. I think there's a lot of speed in here, so uh, I like the outside draw. I think he was on inside last year. Um, but I uh, got to use Limousine Liberal, Whitmore, and Imperial Hint, all the ones you mentioned. Outplay, if he runs, I, I would throw in there as well um, for Pletcher, just uh, has one start under his belt this year and could be, could move forward uh, in a big way for Pletcher. So uh, I would spread a little bit in that race, too, in the pick five. I'm not uh, locked in on anybody. I think there's several that could win in there, but Awesome Slew is going to be my win pick. Ninth race starts the All-Stakes Pick 4. It's the, uh, for three-year-olds at a mile on a 16th on the turf, the Grade 2 American turf. Uh, rushing Fall is entered uh, from all the reports I've heard. She's expected to scratch and, and run on Friday instead. Uh, she drew poorly here. But if she runs, I'd give her a big shot against the boys. Uh, I think she is special. Uh, but uh, I don't think she's going to run. Um, she does. I've, I've, she got to be on my Pick 4 ticket. But uh, assuming she doesn't run, then... Uh, I like uh, Untamed Domain for Grand Motion. They tried to get this horse on the Derby Trail with a dirt start and didn't work. And um, you look back to the races last year, uh, second to Mendelssohn in that uh, key ju- uh, juvenile turf uh, at the Breeders' Cup. I think Untamed Domain is going to be real tough in here. Not wild about the post, but a mile and the 16th is better than a mile. So Untamed Domain, um, I like a lot in here. And then... Uh, Speed Franco and Maraud. Uh, Maraud may not have liked that yielding turf last time at Keeneland. And those two uh, ran well in the Palm Beach. And horses in that race, it's always a tough race down at Gulfstream. And I, I think those horses come back to Kentucky usually run well. Uh, three and four pence from uh, just out of respect for Aiden O'Brien's barn, I would include. Uh, but I like Untamed Domain uh, a good bit there, assuming Rushing Falls not in. How about you? I'm going to go deep in here, and uh, the horses that came out of the same race uh, or raced against each other a lot, Maraud, Speed, Speed Franco, Captivating Moon, uh, and Untamed Domain, Domain, I can make a case for all of them. So I'm going to spread here in the pick four. Uh, Speed Franco would be my pick here because of the draw, and um, uh, there's not a whole lot of other speed inside. It looks like to me that, that he's going to get the, the lead rather easily here. And the horses on the outside – you know, Dragon Drew's got some speed. Um, I don't think anybody else really wants to leave. So I'm I'm going to try my normal handicapping here. And it looks like to me that, that Speed Franco has it all his way. And he may just lead him all the way around. Uh, the other horses that have, that have run with him have beaten him before. But uh, he's finished in front of them as well. So I'm going to take him on top. Also going to use three and four pence. Like, like you say, I respect Braden O'Brien. I'm going to use River Boyne um, for Jeff Mullins, unknown coming in out of Santa Anita, but he's won three in a row out there, so a uh, step up in class for him, but I think he's got a shot. And Tiger's Rule, I liked him in Transylvania, didn't run very well, and, and uh, they, they really were high on this horse going into Transylvania. He may not, not like the yielding turf course. Captivating Moon for Chris Block, and we use him out of Transylvania. Um, the other two I mentioned, and if Rushing Fall runs, you got to use him, but use her as well, but... Uh, I'm going to go like seven deep here in the pick four, but Speed Franco is my top pick. Takes us to the 10th race, the Pet Day Mile. Uh, three-year-olds going a mile, and I thought this was really uh, tough in here. I, I changed my mind a few times. Who did you go with? <laughs> going deep again. I'm going, to, I'm going to single here in a minute, so I, I'm i not going to run out of money, I don't think. <laughs> but um, this one's tough. I mean, I, I can make a case for a lot of horses in here, probably – Madison's Luna was very impressive at Gulfstream, winning the Hutchinson. One drew off by five lengths and uh, lightly raced, only has been out twice, but two for two. 
Giroux takes the mount. Uh, Le Peru lands on Mississippi, which he's ridden five times, and I think he's right there as well. But uh, Medicine's Luna intrigues me a little bit, along with Mask. They've got similar patterns. They each ran a 92 in their second uh, second time out. Mask has been out since January 6th, so there's been something going on with him, and they haven't raced him since then. But uh, I'm going to use him as well as Medicine's Luna. I'm going to use Mississippi, the five. I'm going to use National Flag underneath the one horse for Pletcher. Off that 100 buyer back at Gulfstream uh, at seven furlongs should like to stretch out to a mile. Then on the outside, Sporting Chance, Restoring Hope are also horses that have a shot. And Gravitos, the horse that uh, ran fourth in the Lexington, just got beat three lengths by my, my boy Jack. So I'm going to go deep here, but uh, my pick would be Madison's Luna, the seven. I uh, went to Gray Vitos ultimately. I like that outside draw for a, a long sprint like this. I like the cutback. Second off a layoff, this horse had uh, some issues and uh, ran a really nice race in the Lexington at Keeneland. Looked like a winner at one point at the top of the stretch. And uh, I'm thinking they uh, might have the Preakness in mind if he uh, runs big. So um, I'm going to take Gray Vitos. I like restoring hope for Baffert. I ended up thinking the Californians might be the, the key angle here. Uh, Sporting Chance was my original pick. Um, cup, this horse has really been training great and just hasn't produced it in the afternoons. And maybe the cutback to one turn would do the trick for Lucas. So I think that one's very dangerous at a price. Uh, mask and National Flag for Chad Brown and Pletcher. Uh, so I'm going to use all those in my pick four. And I'd like to use more, including the one that you had on top. But I'm going to give you one to include on tickets. I don't think he can win it. But we've seen Dallas Stewart hit big at a big price on Derby Day before in the Derby. I think Give Me a Minute uh, is going to love to cut back to uh, one turn and gets Corey Lannery and a race with a good bit of speed. And I just think this horse is going to be flying late and could get uh, onto the board. So just a, a, a little tip there for a price horse to uh, look at Give Me a Minute. And uh, you throw him into multi-race wagers if your budget permits. I, I didn't use him just to keep the ticket affordable, but... Uh, I think that one's dangerous, but I'm going to make Gray Vitos my win pick in the Pat Day Mile. The Grade 1 Turf Classic is next at a mile and an eighth on the turf. Um, I ended up going to Kurilov, one of the two Chad Browns. Um, I think one of the Chad Browns wins this, uh, or Deauville, one of those three. I feel pretty strong about the, either the Chad Browns or Deauville from Aiden O'Brien. One of those three wins it. I ended up on Kurilov. I think this horse is still improving. The first, third, and fourth place finishers from uh, his last race came back to win, and including uh, heart to heart in the Grade One Makers 46 Mile. So I like Kurilov in here at a little bit of a price, but I want to use Beach Patrol and Deauville as well in the uh, Turf Classic. Jim, how do you see the Turf Classic? Well, I'm going to run out of money. I, I want to go deep in the Derby, so I'm going to single Beach Patrol. Uh, Chad Brown. Nothing has to be said about the way he gets his horses ready. A lot of people saying this horse will need one off the layoff. Um, he didn't need one last year off the layoff. He almost won this race off uh, off a three-month layoff. Um, I, I don't think he's going to be short. I think he's going to be the classiest horse in the race. I think he's going to win. So I'm going to like I like Beach Patrol here a lot. That was the one I, I, I'm cutting my ticket down on. You can make a case for your horses, Doville and Kurilov. I can also make a case for Synchrony. A horse ran really well at fairgrounds twice in a row. Uh, at this distance, so uh, I, I can make a real case for Synchrony, but he got good trips from the inside that last time, and uh, I don't think he's quite the class of Beach Patrol. And I've, you know, you look back at his past performances. This is his ninth Grade One in a row, uh, never worse than fourth, never got beat by less than uh, by more than a length and a half. Uh, so uh, I think he's so consistent, and I think he's so good right now that I, I'm going to take a stand with him right here. So I'm going to single Beach Patrol. If I played inside the race, I would certainly use Deauville, Kurilov, and maybe Shining Copper to, to take him a long way and maybe get a piece of it. I think they're going to pass him at the end, but he still could, could hold on for a piece. So Beach Patrol with 10 horses, my pick in the Old Forester Turf Classic. And that brings us to the Grade 1 Kentucky Derby, presented by Woodford Reserve at a mile and a quarter. The 12th race on a 14-race card. How do you see the Derby, the Derby for the 144th time? How do you see it? You know, it scares me a little bit because normally uh, I've been thinking about Derby for a couple of weeks, and, and with our live meet winding down the last few days, you think about Derby horses, you've seen them work out here, and um, I haven't really changed my mind. I was I was impressed with Good Magic and the Bluegrass 
I was impressed with Justify and the San Diego Derby, and those are going to be my two keys on top. I think um, I'd hate to take Justify at three to one. Um, I don't know if he's going to go to seven to two or four to one. He may go even lower at five to two. He looks so good on the track. I can't imagine how he's going to react to having 20 horses in a field where he's only faced seven before at Santa Anita. Um, can't imagine how he's going to react to 160,000 people yelling at him. But my goodness, he looks good. And he, he's looked good in every race, and he may just be a super horse. But I think Good Magic, the bluegrass, really turned him around. He wasn't very good in the Fountain Youth. He needed the race after being off since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, he was the best that day last year by far. Um, whether he's going to be that much the best on Saturday, I probably doubt it. I don't, I don't think that there's any horse that's gonna, that can blow him away unless it is justified. And those three buyers for justified are just outstanding. We see horses that have had three buyers in the 100s in their first three races. That is incredibly rare. Um, so I'm going to take those two on top. Uh, good Magic is going to be the better value. I don't think there's any way you get 12 to 1 on, on Good Magic. I think he's going to be 6 to 1, 7 to 1, something like that. But I'm going to use him on top. I like Audible, the five horse, a lot. I thought the Florida Derby win was very impressive after he didn't have much of a uh, test in the Holy Bull. The Florida Derby is, has turned out to be a pretty good race. Hofberg is getting a lot of talk around the track as being uh, really the, the up and coming horse, and Audible put him away so easily. So I think Audible's got a real shot. I think my boy Jack, the 10 horse, is is my long shot at the board. I don't think he's going to win the race, but he's going to pass a lot of tired horses in the end. He's going to get a mile and a quarter. Uh, if you watch the Lexington, he was dead last and, and ran them down from the outside post at a mile and 16. He's got that kind of kick at the end. He's going to pass most of the horses in this field, and I think I'm going to key him third and fourth in some tries and supers. Um, Boldoro, if you like um, a California horse, if you like um, – Justify, you got to like him. He's ran, he ran right behind him last time out, but he couldn't beat Good Magic in the Juvenile last year. So I, I don't know that he's as good as he was advertised coming into the Juvenile. And Mendelssohn, who knows how, how well he's going to run, the 14. Um, I, was play, I was at Red Mile earlier today, and somebody came in and played a 14-14 Oaks Derby double, which is, um, if you forget, the 14 is a Monomoy girl. So that's not a bad play. 14-14 would be an unusual double. I think the rest of the horses are probably uh, Magnum Moon. I'm going to play against him. I don't think the Arkansas Derby is a very strong race. Noble Indy, Pletcher said he's going to send him for the 19 hole. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, I doubt if he can win from out there. Uh, the inside horses, I don't think, have much of a prayer. So I'm going to stick with probably five horses in my pick four, and Good Magic and Justify are my picks from value standpoint alone and probably sentimental value because of the bluegrass winner winning the derby, I'm going to take good magic. I am on a coin flip between two horses, and uh, for the win pick, I am going to Mendelssohn, uh, but I think it's Mendelssohn or Justify wins it uh, for me. Mendelssohn's last three races on three different surfaces in three different countries, so he is battle-tested. Um, Aiden O'Brien's one of the top trainers in the world, and the they pointed for this spot for a long time. Horses bred for the dirt, half brother to Beholder, who nearly won the Oaks and uh, was by a, a sprint stallion, but uh, had, a, had the uh, the bottom came from the dam side, which is uh, uh, this horse gets that plus Scat Daddy on top. So um, I think uh, the pedigree is good for Mendelssohn. I think he just may be better on the dirt uh, than uh, he he was on uh, turf and certainly on on Polly. And um, I'm going to take him, but boy, you're right. Justify looks great. Uh, I've described him as the uh, LeBron James of this field. He's like the you know straight high school to the NBA, and and uh, makes a transition without too much trouble. And you know if, if anybody's going to win the Derby off three starts without having raced until the I think the middle of February, it's it's going to be this guy because he looks special. So I think it's one of those two that wins it. I'm hoping that they won't run one-two from a betting standpoint for me, and I'm going to try to find a price in second. Uh, I'll use good magic. I don't think I'll get the price, but I think he's certainly got a, a big shot, but I think he's going to be bet down some. Vino Rosso I like uh, to uh, have a shot to get in that two-hole. Hofberg I like. And uh, Solomini, they're going to take him back this time, and I think the pace might be a little hotter than uh, some might think here in the Derby. And Solomini coming back and running late. Uh, I think that could suit him well in this spot, and he could uh, be up there in the in the mix for tries and supers. So I'll have him on the ticket as well. But uh, 
We'll get to the pick four now, and I'm just going to use two horses at the back leg. On the first leg in the ninth, I'm going to take five horses. One I'm rushing fall probably scratches, but I'll use uh, one, three, 10, 11, 12 in there. In the 10th, I'll go 1, 8, 11, 12, 14. 1, 3, 10 in the third leg, and then 7, 14 in the derby. How about you? Well, I'm going to feel bad because I'm going to put a lot more expensive ticket out there. Um, but I, I, I'm i going to single um, Beach Patrol. So I'm going to use 7 by 7 by every how many you can afford in derby. I'm going to give you my top 7. So uh, just multiply 49 times every many horses you have in the last leg and divide it by two, and you're, you'll get your ticket price. So uh, I'm going to go 1, 3, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11 with 1, 5, 7, 8, 11, 12, 14 with 10. And then in the Derby, and I'm going to give you my picks in the order that I would use them, is uh, the 6, Good Magic, the 7, Justify, the five audible, the ten my boy Jack, the eleven boat Doro, and then I would use fourteen Mendelssohn, and I would use nineteen Noble Indy just as an outside shot. So I, I would go seven by seven by seven. And that's one hundred seventy-one dollars and fifty cents. Everyone you save off that ticket saves you twenty-four fifty. But the, uh, the prices are going to be good. It's going to it's going to pay a lot of money. Uh, I don't think there's any way three favorites win those three races where I go seven deep. So. That's my pick. I want to wish everybody a very fortunate derby, and hope, hopefully everybody has winning picks. Yep, amen to that. Best of luck. Uh, remember, get your uh, Keelan Select accounts funded uh, in advance because it'll get crazy on Derby Day, and you might see a last-minute uh, overlay on the odds board you'd like to get down on if you're not uh, not there or not at the simulcast facilities around the state. So best of luck with your wagers on Derby Day. For Jim Goodman, I'm Tom Leach. This is the End of Money Podcast for KeelanSelect.com.